any of you guys from the SEC are listening, I hope you are, I want you to know in the deepest, deepest parts of your heart that I've saved a lot more people from being wrecked than you have. Because I did everything I could to prevent people from putting their money into BlockFi. Did you? I did everything I could to prevent people from putting their money into Celsius. Did you? I did everything I could to put people in charge of their own keys and get them to have self-custody. Did you do that? I called the top on the day. Did you? What have you done? So I break my balls to save people. I'm warning people about bad dApps, fake airdrops, showing people constantly every single hack that happens, right? I hand out free coins out the yin yang. I created free coins, give them to Bitcoin holders. Now I'm creating free coins, giving them to Ethereum and every single ERC20 holder. I'm the giving tree of crypto. I raised 27 million for charity. You know what the SEC did? The SEC uh, got paid $50 million. All right, so that is Richard Hart and whatever he says there, I'm not sure if it's going to help him when it comes to this big case uh, against the SEC. And we're going to talk about the SEC case and uh, Richard Hart and what, what it means. We also going to talk about Bitcoin and where we're at with Bitcoin. So yesterday when we were on the show, we said that it was decision time and Bitcoin needed to either break up or break down. It looks like we got our breakdown and we are at the same level, exactly the level which Annie said when she was on the show yesterday. She said it's going to be 28,800. I pressed her about it. I said, is it going to go up or down from here? She said it's going to go down and she's looking for the 28,800. But look, not all is lost. We have dropped one level, which is the 50, the 50 MA, the 50, the 50 day moving average. We've dropped that level, but we are here at another critical level. So I want to show you this, this level here. If you take, let me actually zoom out first. Let me go onto the day, onto the daily. And if you take this trend over here and, oh, okay, let me just get off the screen. So if you take this trend line over here, it is exactly what Gary said in terms of the trend so we are let me just get that a bit more a bit neater my charts are, my charting skills on the screen are not great um but you can see that bitcoin is now moving back towards this uh, trend line over here and probably if you look at that the, the next critical level is about the twenty-eight thousand. so we are going to talk about that we're also going to talk about this bitcoin dominance spike so it's not a big spike but bitcoin dominance actually did start going up and the reason why bitcoin dominance started going up is because if you look at the bubbles, you can see that there are two things that are really weighing down crypto today. The first thing is the Hex and Pulse story. You've got Hex down 26%, you've got Pulse down 45%. But I'll show you something very cool here when you look at Hex and Pulse. Is that if you go to the hourly, you can see that they're starting to recover on the hourly. So yes, it's been a bad day for Hex and Pulse. But if you go down to a shorter time frame, what you can see is that these tokens are actually starting to turn. And this may be your indicator that it might actually be buy time. So one of the things we, are, we should talk about today is we should talk about whether this is the end for Hex and Pulse or whether we're going to get some kind of recovery. Now, my gut says that um, maybe it's not the end and maybe there's going to be some kind of recovery. The other big sector that you can see has been Hitcher, Aave. Compound, synthetics, all the um, the DeFi tokens, specifically the big DeFi 1.0 tokens that have a lot of traction, they got hit. And we're going to talk about why they got hit, because it's all got to do with Curve and the hack that happened on Curve. But ironically, it's actually not the hacker that's pushing down the price. The big issue is that what's going on here could be a huge a, a huge hit to crypto. This could be something that takes the market down by 10 or 20% overnight if it happens. So we've got to talk about all of that. Then I've got to admit that I was half right and half wrong. So I said that FTX 2.0 would never, ever start. I said that never, ever start the exchange again. And I was half right when I said it, because I said it in context of the fact that the exchange token is going to be worth nothing. And it is going to be worth nothing. But I was wrong, because it seems like the FTX exchange is going to restart. It's going to restart pretty soon. And um, we're going to talk about that today. So there's a lot to talk about today. It's a massive, massive show. We haven't had a big news show like this for a long, long, long time. Let's go. Let's get this show on the road. I mean, it's been a rough 24 hours for altcoins. If you look at the, the altcoin market, it hasn't been great. And you can see it in the, in the dominance going back up towards that 50%. Remember, we were on 49 and a half. And you can see it in the banter bubbles. Um, 
where you can see that the 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 altcoins have been really 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 hard hit we're going to talk about each one of them and why they've been hard hit um and whether or not this is the end or whether we can expect another leg down and let me tell you that there is a real risk of another big leg down in crypto if if this curve situation doesn't resolve itself then we've got a very 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 big problem we're going to get the DeFi, the DeFi protocols the big DeFi protocols with all the traction they are going to get destroyed they are going to get crippled if this curve thing pans out. So it's a pretty serious thing. We did start covering it yesterday, but I think we're going to speak about it today because it could actually affect your portfolio. It's also an amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity. And I'll show you what the opportunity is regarding the curve token. So I do have a long positioning curve. I was stopped out a little bit of my curve position overnight because the price dipped. Um, and I'll show you whether or not it's worth actually getting into a similar trade on curve and where you should get into, into a similar trade on curve because there's a lot of money to be made here. There is a fortune. If you know what you're doing, there's a fortune of money to be made here. Um, I think that's what we're going to be covering today. If you are new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Um, give us some love. Help us get unshadow banned. We shadow banned again. We keep fighting these, these shadow bands. We just cannot win. The only way to get rid of them is if you give us, smash the like button. And if you comment and they know that we're producing good content, of obviously only do it if you think we're producing good content but of course you think we're producing good content otherwise why the hell are you taking are you taking hours out of your day to come and join us here that doesn't really make sense also uh if you are not yet signed up for the bybit competition we will be giving away iphones on the show today uh let's just have a look at our squad we have we have 1948 people in our squad um let's see what the number two squad or the number three squad in fact let's just see what the squad layout looks like um okay let's just quickly see what the layout looks like okay my squad so if i want to change squad don't, don't don't you dare do this don't don't change squads we need you in our squad um okay so we have 1948 the winning team wow we're catching up to them They've, we've got 70 we're 74 behind them we've been 200 behind them the whole time all you do there is a link underneath this video Sign up with a crypto banter Bybit referral link and then sign up to our team. We are going to be giving away the full $8 million that we win if we win to the community. We're not keeping anything for the host. Also today, we're going to be giving away two iPhones at the end of the show to two people that have signed up. So if you're not already signed up, sign up. I mean, you basically get an opportunity to win 20 iPhones between 2,000 people. That's one in every 100 people is going to win an iPhone. And we're going to just keep giving away iPhone and iPhones until we bolster this squad. Um... All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the show because I think there's a massive, massive, massive show to talk about today. There's lots of news. We haven't had news like this for a long time. It's actually one of those days where I actually really want to do a show because there's so much to talk about. So uh, I think we should probably skip the formalities and just get straight into the Hex story because it is a big, big, big story. And I think the big question is, what is Richard Hart going to do? Is Richard Hart actually going to fight the SEC or is he just going to be do what everybody else did and actually settle? And I think that I have some insight today. I'm going to build a story today. I'm going to show you why I think that Richard Hart may actually fight this till the very end. I don't think he's going to just take the, the uh, settlement. I'm going to show you why in a few seconds. But for those of you who don't know what is going on, um, I think you obviously know who Richard Hart is. We showed him in the beginning, in the beginning of the show. We also, we also, on the eve of the launch of the Richard Hart okay. documentary. We are set for you, Richard. What do you want people to know about you? I got a big dick. This here is $3.1 million of watches. <laughs> I don't know the world's biggest diamond. You don't, I do. Who is Richard Hart? Genius. Legendary. Arrogant. Bit of a narcissist. The benevolent king. Quarter million. Hate me, hate me. I'm farther than you'll ever be in your whole life. Who does this guy think he is? Whatever the governments have been doing, it's not worked out. You've never had worse interest rates. Your money has never been worth less. Everything is getting worse. And the only thing that's making it better is cryptocurrency. It's better than the dollar. It's better than gold. It's better money. Crypto is money without governments, and it is money without banks. You're not going to meet another product so, like this as long as you live. Yes, every scammer in the world is going to so tell anyway, you. This is the trailer for the Richard Hart movie. And I think on the eve of the um, the Richard Hart story, the SEC comes out and they make an announcement that they are suing Richard Hart, a.k.a. Richard Schuler. His real name is Richard Schuler, And three unincorporated entities that he controls, Hex, Pulse Chain, and PulseX, with conducted conducting unregistered offerings of crypto asset securities that raised more than a billion dollars in crypto assets from investors. 
Hart called on investors to buy crypto asset securities in offerings that he failed to register with the SEC. He then, this is where it gets tricky, he then defrauded those investors by spending some of their crypto assets on exorbitant luxury goods. This action seeks to protect the investing public and hold Hart accountable for his action. So the SEC coming out with one of their We Caught You announcements. This is the document. It's about 27 pages. I read all 27 pages so that you don't need to read 27 pages. I'll show you the points that are actually important, um, the points that actually make sense. So the first point that actually makes sense is what Hart did was he raised 2.3 million Ethereum from investors with $678 million for the HEX project uh, back then. It appears that 94 to 97% of these ETH deposits, however, were recycling transactions directed by Hart and other insiders, which enabled Hart or other insiders to gain control of a large number of HEX tokens. So what that means is that he was taking the ETH that was deposited and he was recycling them to get more tokens for himself and other insiders. Again, this is the allegations as per the SEC. He says, investors also invested more than 354 million by depositing their crypto assets to the Pulse chain public wallet address in exchange for the promise of a future delivery of PLS tokens. In connection with PulseX, investors invested more than $676 million by depositing their crypto assets to the PulseX public address in exchange for the promise of future delivery of PulseX tokens. They're going after him for HEX, for Pulse, and for PulseX. Now, up until this point, this whole thing is just a civil case between Hart and the SEC for potentially selling unregistered securities. To this point, it's pretty simple, straightforward. And probably the same charges that every other ICO um, founder is going to face. Now, some of them will fight the, the charges and some of them won't fight the charges. That's just, that's just what it is. But this is the point where it gets a little bit more tricky. So if you look at page seven, so it's point number seven. Additionally, Hart and Pulse Chain defrauded investors by misappropriating at least 12.1 million of Pulse Chain investor funds. Instead of using these funds to develop and market the Pulse Chain network or even fulfill Hart's explicit statement that invested funds support freedom of speech, Hart and Pulse Chain used $12.1 million of investor funds for, Hearty, for Hart's personal Hearty luxury, luxury purchases, including a 555 karat diamond, the biggest black diamond in the world, expensive watches, and high-end automobiles. Now, but I mean, that was the lifestyle that, that, that Hart was actually doing. And we all saw this. We saw the sports cars. We saw the watches. Now, there's a big question here. Like, is this misappropriation of investor funds? On the one hand, he did tell everyone that they were sacrificing their money. And if you sacrifice the money, well, then you're not actually an investor. And if you're not an investor, well, then you don't have any rights that investors have. So what the SEC is going after him for is they're making an assumption that A, these tokens are securities, and that B, that he actually misappropriated funds. Now, the, again, the term misappropriated funds means that investors had expectations, investors had expectations that the funds would be used for a certain purpose. These weren't investors. These were people that sacrificed their money. And probably that's going to be Hart's defense. Now, I wonder if he actually got any legal opinions before he actually did this. And if he did get those legal opinions, I wonder if he actually listened to his lawyers or whether his ego got the better of him. Because it's all very well that, you know, sometimes you, you get advice from your lawyers and as you land up making more and more money, you start thinking that you're more and more invincible. And if you feel more invincible, then you may stretch what your lawyers have told you and kind of justify it to yourself that it's okay to use these funds. Perhaps, perhaps you can call this marketing. Perhaps you can call this, you know, part of the game to try and get people to sign up to the Hex community, you know, and, and you could say that this was what you did. The other issue is that it seems like the SEC said that, he, okay, he is a U.S. citizen, but he also, um, uh, the offers offering for sale of HEX and HEX tokens have not been registered with the commission and they were available to U.S. investors. And I think that that may actually be um, another a, another issue that he has. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you, I think it's a point, page 11, so point Page 11, Hex, Hex conducted the worldwide offering with no restrictions on who could access the Hex and Hex.com and Hex.win websites. Um, these transactions can be traced to at least 21,156 wallet addresses, including addresses that belong to investors in the United States. How do they know that? 
They know your IP address. If you're not masking your IP address using NordVPN, they know exactly where you are and your address is monitored like, one, like all of these other addresses. Okay, now the last part here is one that I want to show you, which is uh, point 37, where it says, after the more than 2.3 million ETH was deposited into the hex and transferred to the hex slash address, the ETH was subsequently sent on through a number of transactions involving a series of intermediary addresses to a so-called crypto asset trading platform. Then the ETH was sent back to the hex contract. So he was using the ETH that was put into the contract to try and get himself a bigger stake of Pulse. It's called recycling, and that's exactly what he was doing. So those are the allegations against Hart. In the document here, they show a wallet which they allege is owned by Richard Hart. And in this wallet, there are at least $703 million of DAI. And there's $703 million of DAI. Here it is. Um, you've got, um, yeah, $703 million. So that is his own private wallet. He still has $703 million in, in, in his wallet. Um, I mean, there's no doubt about the fact that he was pushing the price of hex. Let's just listen to that. Weird to say that you could see each hex be worth a million dollars. It's really weird. But then I look at the chart, and the chart literally is pointed to a million dollars. And this is with like a conservative. So I mean, you know, he was telling people that that it was going to go to a million dollars, and as a founder of a tech company, you don't really want to be doing stuff like that. He also appeared on, on many um, debates, pushing Hex. I'll show you something. Round about. four. Is Richard Hart launching a shitcoin? Richard, you are about to launch yes. your own cryptocurrency Correct. this month, which yes. is Hex, yes. which is, as far as I understand, is uh, um, a certificate. Yeah, exactly. Uh, an int certificate of deposit on the blockchain, which can be used to earn interest. Yes. So, so you, you define Hex, uh, Richard's uh, upcoming uh, project, um, a shitcoin. So why do you think it's a shitcoin? So he was very much in, in, in all of these debates and I'm not going to bore you with all the details here. Um, but now I guess the big question is, will Richard Hart defend this? And is the crypto community going to celebrate Richard Hart defending this just like they, like they celebrated XRP and Ripple defending against uh, against the SEC. So I think this time it's a little bit different because I think the perception inside crypto from a lot of people is that Richard Hart is a scammer and that Hex and Pulse Chain were the big scams. And I saw a lot of tweets out there this week uh, or yesterday saying that finally the SEC is actually going after someone who who is a real scammer, someone who actually did lead a whole lot of innocent investors and defraud them and scan them out of their own money. That's the sentiment that you get that you get on crypto Twitter. So it's very different from the settle, the sentiment that we got with the XRP case. With the XRP case, whether you love to hate the XRP, you always were you always wanted Ripple to win the case. In this case, that's not the case. In fact, the next big fear that Richard Hart may be facing is that he may actually get criminally charged. So if you read the SEC documentation and you see that there is, you know, that mention around the misappropriation of funds, misappropriation of funds is not a civil case. The SEC is an institution that can only inst institute civil claims against parties. But they allude to a lot of stuff that is pretty much criminal in nature. And the big question is whether we're going to get a Department of Justice um, uh, uh, action against Richard Hart. And if he does... Unfortunately, if he does, there is a reality that if he is found guilty, and someone says, if you look at page 90 of the sentencing guidelines, he's already at 40 points, which if you look up the sentencing chart in the same PDF is rec a recommended life sentence. So here people are talking about potentially, potentially, again, we don't have any criminal activities yet, but he could actually, if he's found guilty, he could actually face life imprisonment. Now that is extremely harsh. How is he taking all of this? Well, I tried to get hold of him. Uh, obviously, he didn't get he didn't get back to me yet. Um, he says on, on his on his uh, Twitter. I mean, it's a big fuck you. He says Richard doesn't read messages, email, newspapers, magazines, letters, communication of any form, or listen to any radio or, or anything else. Stay humble. In his Telegram, it says doesn't respond to messages. Um, I think the other thing is the big question is is he actually going to fight this? Now that's a big question because option one is that he'll just settle like everyone else. 
you know, like you think about Block One, they managed to settle with the SEC. They ran a $4 billion illegal ICO with unregistered securities and they paid the SEC $25 or $30 million and they just let the whole thing go. And that's pretty much like life as a founder in the United States. Like you raise the money and then you say sorry later and you pay the SEC and it's game over. But I think that Richard Hart may actually fight this. And I think that the reason why Richard Hart may actually fight this is because he's the type of guy that just wants to be noticed. He wants to make a difference. He hates the fact that Satoshi is bigger than him and Vitalik is, is bigger than him. And when I once interviewed him on my show, you'll remember that I asked him, I said, Richard, like, I've known you for a long time. What is this obsession that you have with walking around with Louis Vuitton bags and watches and whatever else? So this is what he said. Uh, we got you, guys. In the interest of time, Rich, I want to bring up one more thing. And, and, and I mean, this is, this is actually something that, that, that I'm actually very curious about. So I've known you for a long time. I think the first time that we met was on my CNBC show, and I think that was in about 2017. And I always found you a very interesting guy. Thanks, um, man. You had watches in the background, I think, at the time. And you, in, in fact, you had the candles in the background. You had the, they had the big candle thing. Million dollar Rolex Daytona oh. Rainbow. Million dollars of Bulgari. So that's a, this is the question I want this is the question I want to ask you, and, I, and I'm asking this um, not facetiously. I'm asking this mm. to you very respectfully. What mm. happened between then and now that you find the urge to flex so much with material with, with materialistic items? So I mean, like, I, I mean, would mm. you agree with me? Would you agree with me that your level of flash is unparalleled? Probably. I, I don't think I've ever seen a level pretty of close. Flash. No, pretty close. <laughs> It's pretty close. I, I mean, look, I must say, I, I stumbled. Richard on, Hart here, I stumbled, my brand new. I stumbled on your Instagram account the other day. I mean, you, people have to follow the Instagram account. It's 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 gone it now. It's no longer there. Rolls Royce, calling in black. I paid seven hundred thousand euros for wearing my million dollar Daytona Rainbow. Look at that. Look beautiful. Look at that gradient. Look at how perfect the gradient is. Mm. Also wearing my million dollar Bulgari Serpenti set here. This is what actually well made amazing deep flawless jewelry looks like. Okay, so I mean that's one. I'm gonna show you my personal favorite. There is one here which is which is <laughs> I do have a personal favorite. Um installing the toilet. No, 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 it's actually not the toilet, it's it's the uh, weightlifting one. It's I, I, I hope oh, I've nice. got it. All it's the right. where, where do I find the weightlifting one? Oh God, I don't know, man. It's a good question. It is to me. It's there it the is, right there. I wanted to up, ask him is up, the question up, that I asked him is right there, why left. is, is, well, yeah, is uh, why do you do this? Is. My personal favorite. <laughs> Deadlifting. That's shopping. Yeah, someone someone made that. The deadlifts are real. The shopping bags are actually they, they get pretty heavy. So you know, life's not fair, and everyone has more followers than me. People that have stolen people's money have bankrupted people have been fraudulent, have been misleading, have done great harm in the world, have more followers than me. Uh, I think Duquan has more followers than me. I think Three Hours Capital guy, uh, Suzu, has more followers than me. I think a lot of uh, scammers, this guy named Ben Baller, he said all my watches were fake. He said uh, the, my, the, my SF90,000 horsepower Ferrari is slower than a 765 LT. It's not. He says it's slower than a Senna and a quarter mile. No, it's not. You know, this guy just says all these lies. He's got more followers than me and sells people an advisory service on how to gamble to make a secondary income sports gambling. Wow. What a piece of trash. So all these scumbags have more followers than me. Now, why is that? Is it because they designed better products? Nope. Is it because they got better returns? Nope. Is it because they called the top of the day? Nope. Called the watch top as well. No. And so I did everything I could that in a just and fair world would lead me to glory. That would lead me to greatness. My voice would be amplified because I was right about everything forever. But that's not how it worked out. Instead, the scumbags that are louder and more rambunctious. And so you can see that all he wants to do is he wants to be bigger and he wants to be accepted. Now, the reason why I say that there's a good chance that he'll fight this is because with that attitude in mind, what he wants is he wants to be remembered. He wants to, to make a change. He wants to be someone who's imprinted in, 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 the, in, the, in the legend hall of crypto. And what better way to do that then to take on the SEC and to actually win. Now, we know he's got a lot of money. We know he's got $750, $700 million at least, and he probably has way more than that. He claims to have been a billionaire before he got into Hex and before he got into crypto, and he made a whole lot of money through Hex and crypto because I think we all know that he is the, the receiver of all these funds. So I suspect that he actually may fight this. And 
I mean, hopefully there's no criminal charges because I don't, don't want to see Richard Hart in jail. And certainly I don't want to see him in jail for life. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And my vote is that he actually fights us and doesn't actually take a settlement. But I guess time will tell. I guess time will tell. So let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you think that he's a scammer. Let me know if you think he's just a good guy, but cringe in his ways. Let me know if you think that um, he should go to jail. Let me know if you think that he actually is one of these people that actually should go to jail. Let me know in the comments. Let's 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 get some action going. I'll read some of the comments in, in, in a few seconds. Um, in the meantime, I think we should move on to the, the next story because it's a very, very big story and it can make a, a, big, a big impact on crypto. And it is possibly the reason why the bubbles looked like the bubbles looked like today and why the market's down here because it's a serious 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 story and the serious story here is around curve and the hack which happened on curve now we did report about this on in good morning crypto which is our newsletter it's one of our three newsletters if you're not already subscribed to good morning crypto go now and subscribe now trust me just go now and subscribe now because you get the news before the news actually comes out on 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 the show because we have a, a morning call here at Banter. Then the newsletter writers write the newsletter, the newsletter, and then we get the newsletter and we make the show. So if you want to get this stuff first, there's a link below to Good Morning Crypto. You just subscribe to Good Morning Crypto um, and you'll get the news before it actually happens. Um, so the, the story is all around this hack that happened in Curve. Now, you know, July was a very big hack month for crypto. In fact, one of the biggest hack months for crypto. And one of the, 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 the hacks that actually happened was the Curve protocol was hacked. It was hacked because of a problem with the compiler. I'm not going to get into the technical detail. Now, here's the story. The hacker still has 7 million Curve in his wallet. This is the hacker's wallet. He has um, $14 million worth of wrapped ETH, and he has 7 million Curve tokens valued at $4.3 million. That's not really scary. The fact that he has $4.3 million worth of Curve, not really the scariest thing in the world. Here's where it gets scary. The problem is that this founder decided that he wanted to buy this mansion in Australia. And in order to buy this $100 million mansion or $80 million mansion in Australia, he needed money. And the one way to get money without actually selling your founder's token. So if you're a founder and you believe in the future of your protocol, but you want to enjoy some of the fruits of your labor now before, before you cash out, what you can do is you can take a loan against your tokens. Like you can do it in, in a traditional world where you go to the bank and you say, look, I work for Uber. I've got a whole lot of share options. Here are the share options. Now, please give me a loan against my share options. There are, there are great advantages to that because you land up not paying tax. Because if he were to sell the curve, he would have to pay tax on the capital gains. But if you borrow against the curve, okay, so borrow against your tokens, you go to a protocol like Aave, which is a lending protocol, you lock up your curve tokens, you give them your curve tokens, and they give you dollars against or, or, or stable coins against your tokens. The problem is that you have to keep a certain ratio of the value of your curve tokens to the value of the loans. Problem is that as the price of curve goes down, you could get liquidated. And that's the problem. The problem is that what this guy's got is he's got in multiple lending and borrowing protocols, he's got over 48% of the circulating supply of Curve locked up in these lending protocols. He has 303 million Curve on, on Aave. He's got 51 million on Abracadabra. He's got 41 million on Fraxlend. He's got 25 million on Inverse Finance. He's got 3.3 million on StakeDAO. He's got 2.35 million on, on Silo. So $427 million of, of million Curve tokens he has locked up and he's borrowed against them. Now, here's where it gets hairy. The problem is that because of this fear, so I'll read you what Delphi wrote. They said, yesterday, several Curve finance will be exploited. Curve founder Michael Egorov currently has a $100 million loan backed by 427.5 million Curve. On Aave, Egorov has 305 million Curve. I showed that to, I showed that to you guys. Now on Frax, he has a whole lot of Curve. The problem is that as this becomes riskier, the rate keeps increasing. The rate of interest keeps increasing. And so his liquidation price gets higher and higher and higher. So right now, the current interest rate is 81.2%, and it can increase to 10,000% APY, which means that effectively what's going to happen is he's just eventually going to get liquidated. Now, here's the problem. 
Unlike the traditional financial system, DeFi works exactly like it's supposed to work. And therefore, there are no spe special favors that you can call the bank manager to do. Once his liquidation price gets hit, the DeFi protocols are going to start executing the liquidation trades. When that happens, the holders of the tokens in those DeFi protocols, Aave, Synthetix, um, let's just see where else this, this founder actually had money. So in Aave, Abracadabra, Fraxland, they're going to take a loss because the value of their, their collateral is not going to be able to repay the loan. And that's going to cause a hit, a systematic hit to the whole of DeFi. So we want this price not to go anywhere near the 40 cents and, not, and so, that, so that we don't get liquidated unless you want to buy the tokens cheap, in which case it's great. Right now, what the market's telling you is that this is not really a concern anymore. Last night, it was a massive concern. In fact, the price on centralized exchanges went down to 47 and a half cents. On the decentralized exchanges, on chain, the price went down very, very, very close to the liquidation price. And as I said, if we did get the liquidation price, that would spark a cascade of these automatic liquidations that no one would be able to stop and eventually would take down all the, 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 the old DeFi 1.0 protocols. You should have been there last night and you should have been buying last night. I, I tried to buy, but in the middle of the night, I got liquidated, which was, I mean, I, I left a stop loss. I never leave stop losses, but this was so risky. There was actually one of the times where I thought, okay, I better actually leave, I, I better actually leave a stop loss. So um, it was scary. I mean, it was scary. There were, you can see there were no bids last night. It was like either these bids were going to snap up everything or this guy was going to get liquidated and he was going to take the whole of DeFi um, with him in his, in his liquidation. Before that, he, he was scrounging around and he was selling ten and $20,000 batches of tokens. Like he had Lido, One Inch, and a whole lot of others. And he was just trying to sell as many of the tokens that he could to actually repay the loans. Okay, but then something changed. And what he started to do was he started to go to other people and sell them some of his tokens OTC. So he went to Justin Sun to get more. So he, he would sell tokens OTC, take the money and use that money to repay the loans and to reduce the, the, the um, liquidation price on the loans. So he went to a whole lot of people. He went to Justin Sun. He sold him 5 million curve at 40 cents, which is 50% under the market price. He went to... Um, um, and, and you see, he started to repay the loans. He went to Machi Big Brother. He went to DWF Labs. He went to Cream Finance. We then decided to reach out to him and said, hey, we're looking for $3 million worth of Curve at 40 cents. Uh, we are talking to, I think, his team or an extension of his team. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to buy $1 million worth of Curve at 40 cents. Now, that, that $1 million worth of Curve is actually locked up for a period of about a, a, a year. So we can't actually um, knock the price. But I think these are the opportunities that you actually look for. And you can see that the smart investors like um, Justin Sun, DCF God, DWF Labs, and a whole lot of others have actually bought a whole lot of, um, they've taken advantage of this, of this man's weakness and um, they've started to buy, the, to buy these tokens from him, OTC. So that's where it is. For now, I think that the, the issue is under control. Your telltale sign that the issue is not under control is going to be in the price. If you see the price starting to go down, you know the issue is no longer under control. You know you've got to do something. Um, and what I would recommend is I would wait to see how far the price goes down and I'd buy some. Why? Because I don't think it's the end of curve. I think the founder may get liquidated. I think the liquidation will create amazing, amazing opportunities for us. But that's the beauty of DeFi. Because the protocol will just carry on doing what it's supposed to do in a decentralized way doesn't need the founder. It just This is just the way that the market's going to get the founder out of his tokens. So you're getting these like whales who are seeing what's going on with this founder and they've gone absolutely short. Also remember another thing. When people are absolutely short, what you can know for sure is going to happen, you're going to get a short squeeze. And that short squeeze on curve is going to come and I think the price is going to get it somewhere towards 68 or 70 cents. So that is what we're looking out for when it comes to curve. I think for now, disaster averted. We don't have a disaster now. Uh, we are going to get to the next story. But before we get to the next story, I do want to give away an iPhone to one of our Bybit squad members. Uh, let's just see what we've got going on here. All right. You in the comments, pick a number between 1 and 1,700. I see we've got 1954. We can give away two iPhones on the show here. Uh, give me a number between 1 and 1,750. And then I'll use that number and I will... Okay, the number is 698. And that is thanks to Farrafin. Farrafin. Uh, 698. 
Okay. Um, the if you are user ID number um, four five zero one nine eight three five, email giveaways at cryptobanter.com from the email that is registered to this address, and you will be um, you will be uh, you'll get an iPhone. The second iPhone I'm going to give away on the Discord. So go to our Discord, sign up for our Discord, and um, there's a link below. All the alpha, all the calls, all the charts, all the trades that I take, Sheldon takes, Miles takes, Bombay, Bombay. And by the way, if you're, if you're not watching Bombay's show on the other channel, on our other channel, you need to watch Bombay's show because he's an amazing, amazing technical analyst. I mean, I hate to say it. I never say it to his face, but he is one of the best traders out there. Just got a big head. So the problem is I can't say it to his face because if I say it to his face, then he thinks he's a good trader. And then the problem is that he, you know, like he, he gets arrogant. But I'm, I'm never telling that. Um... All right, so that is that. Let's talk about the next story. We do have lots of alpha still coming up today, so it might be a slightly longer show. Um, all right, we do have... Uh, this is a crazy story. This is an absolute crazy story. We spoke about the story yesterday. Remember, we spoke about Bold. Bold is the meme coin that was launched on the base protocol, which is the Coinbase Layer 2 on Ethereum. And it was, it's named after Brian Armstrong's head. So it's like the bald head. And there were a lot of people that thought that maybe Brian Armstrong or Coinbase were actually linked to Bold in some way. Okay, well, they're not. Of course they're not, because they are trying to remain regulated, and there's no way that they're going to participate in a rug pull. And it was exactly that. It was an absolute rug pull. Look at this. This chart made millionaires and then made peasants in... I mean, this is like one of the shortest cycles that I've ever seen. started on Friday, and by Monday, everyone was poor again. This did 4 million percent. I haven't seen a crypto token do 4 million percent on weekend. This did 4 million percent over the weekend. So here's where it gets juicy. A lot of people now believe that the bold deployer is definitely a Coinbase insider because they held traded lots of Coinbase wrapped Ethereum and routed it through Coinbase. They're also definitely an FTX insider since they deposited and withdrew tens of thousands of STE through FTX. Lots of speculation. But then someone picked up that the sentence structure that this person uses is very similar to the sentence structure that SPF uses. So you can see, he says, you know, the one word correct, which is what Sam bankman fried always used to say, but the one word correct. It's, um, you know, here it is again, SPF, again, correct. Then he says the word, Sam bankman fried always used to use the word nor, and I remember that, like whenever you speak to him, like the word nor. And here again, he's starting to use the word nor. He also used to use the words quite well. So we probably do quite well. Um, seems like a base chain can handle heavy load quite well. And so some people started to pick up that the sentence structures that this person are use, is using is very much um, similar to the way that SPF actually um, uh, um, spoke. Then you've got the old project serum Twitter account, starting to shill altcoins and specifically starting to shill um, uh, uh, what, what's, um, uh, the, the, bold, the bold altcoin. Go back to the bold deployer funding. It's legit SPF trying to make it back from prison. So people are linking this, these accounts back to things that, that, that could be um, related to FTX. Um, Another, an address that frequently deposits in, into the bold deployers, Binance wallet, looks like it's one of the wallets that helped trigger and the DPEG of UST or, or, or the, the UST stablecoin, which is um, exactly what SBF was actually accused of doing. So a lot of people are, are making the, the, um, the, uh, the um, comparison that this may have actually been SBF, um, th that SBF is actually doing. Like, I don't believe it, to be honest. Um, as far as I know, he's not allowed to use the internet, but I don't trust the fact that he's not using the internet. Look, the good thing is that this is crypto. And we now have a new thing, which is fuckbold. And fuckbold is actually flying. So you don't need bold anymore. It's, and this is crypto. You guys are a bunch of absolute degens. Elon also had like, Elon also jumped in here. Sam bankman fried the man responsible for one of the biggest frauds in history, is being accused of creating and rag pulling a hundred million dollar uh, million um, market cap shitcoin while on house arrest in his parents' basement this morning. You can't make this shit up. And um, Elon then uh, replies, sigh. And I, I kind of agree with him. Um, yeah, I think so that, that I think covers the, the SPF story. Let's, let's look at the next story because there are couple, a couple of other things that are happening. So also related to, to SBF. 
I've heard, I have a down, you know, let me tell you, I know for sure that the FTX exchange is going to restart. Uh, I know the people that are actually bidding for it. I kind of know the price ranges that it's being sold for. And it looks like the exchange is being sold to a consortium of people um, who are going to start up the exchange again. And we're going to have FTX trading again. Now, that's the bad news or the good news, whichever way you want to call it. Um, the bad news for FTX holders, which is what I said from the beginning, is that the FTX holders will get nothing under the current plan. So if don't go and buy FTT um, because they will get you. You will get nothing under the current plan. So um, I think that, that that's that. Lastly, I want to talk about Japan and uh, a policy change in Japan. So it looks like the Bank of Japan, which is the central bank of Japan, is actually starting to put more money into the um, the their economy. So the Bank of Japan announced unscheduled unscheduled bond buying operation. The bond buying operation buys 300 billion yen of 5 to 10 year uh, um, uh, Japanese bonds and 100 billion in 10 year uh, Japanese bonds. So they're putting more money into the economy and they're doing it because they want to, um, I think that they're doing it because they want to prop up the dollar. They want to, they want, they want to keep the dollar strong. Um, this does add more liquidity, which is good for us, but it's not good for the long term. It says, um, Peter Schiff says correctly, says, Japan is the largest holder of US treasuries. With the yen falling and oil prices surging, Japan bond will come under intense selling pressure. This will put more downward pressure on the yen and more upward pressure on high prices and inflation in Japan. Japan will then dump its treasuries. And that's that's a, a big concern because the, Japan is a big, big, big holder of U.S. treasuries. And if Japan starts dumping U.S. treasuries, it means that the whole debt bubble in the West could actually pop. And people may actually start questioning the reality and the strength of the dollar. Now, bad, very, 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 very scary. But we do need a scary event if we want Bitcoin to become the new age currency. We need something that's going to dethrone the dollar. And I mean, as bad as that is, and we like we don't want that to happen because if we do, we're going to have like much bigger problems than the ones that we've had. Let me tell you, much bigger. But the ones, the problems that we've had up until now, if the dollar collapses, are going to seem tr trivial and menial compared to 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 what what can happen. Um, is there anything else? Yes, there's another big story, a huge story, a huge story. So yesterday, in the Terra case, a federal judge basically said that the XRP ruling started to question the XRP ruling, which is not good. So a federal judge in New York split with another judge who earlier this month ruled that a Ripple Labs token was a, not a security when sold to the public on secondary markets. Remember, that's the big, the big ruling case that we've got. U.S. District Judge Jed Rakoff who is overseeing the SEC case against Terraform Labs and Do Kwan, said on Monday, he rejected the distinction made in the Ripple case between public and institutional sales. Rakoff's decision doesn't overturn the earlier ruling by the US, um, by, by the, the Ripple judge, but revives uncertainty about the status of digital assets. So we've got one ruling from one court which said that tokens which retail trade on exchanges, oh, those are not securities. But if a centralized entity sells tokens to investors, those are securities and, and, it sh and they should be treated like securities. And that was like a landmark ruling because it, it said that the way in which you market an asset is what counts and not actually the asset. And I think that that is, by the way, right. That's the smartest take that I've ever heard. And I'm quite impressed that it comes from a US judge. But this judge here is actually questioning it. And the problem is that right now, what's weakened the SEC is the fact that we've got this ruling from Judge Torres. And if this guy or this, this um, uh, judge comes up with another ruling, then it's going to start getting confusing again and it's going to give the SEC the SEC's power back. So um, let's watch that case because, um, again, that is, I think, one of the reasons why uh, we're getting this. this, this uh, let's look at the hourly because the hourly can tell us what's turning. Looks like hex and pulse are starting to turn. Um, otherwise, it does look like it's still flat, and Bitcoin is very much in that area where Annie said that 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 it would be. Um, what else? Oh, I want to show you. I want to show you a few things. So, first of all, um, you'll remember that we have a sponsor called Crypto Tax Audit. Um, if you are worried about your taxes, you can sign up with these guys. Um, they have a they're the most qualified guys to help you specifically in the, in the United States, but also they have this like. You pay monthly, you pay like a small fee monthly, $12, $59, $179, $249. And then they will protect you in case of an audit. So if, if the if the IRS come to you and want to audit you, these guys will actually protect you for free. So um, 
probably a worthwhile service if you just want to hedge yourself, if you haven't been paying tax, um, you might want to just sign up for this. And then I'm super, super, super excited, but I just want to make sure that I've got everything that I need to do. So, okay, so we have a new sponsor on the show. I'm so excited about the sponsor, okay? You know, I've been completely obsessed with this bot narrative, and I think that these bots are going to be the future of, of, of crypto. So this is our new sponsor for the show. Uh, it is Maestro Bot. Um, and essentially what this is, is a Telegram bot. It talks to your Telegram. It works through your Telegram. And it allows you to do a whole lot of things um, pretty automatically. So you can actually trade uh, pretty automatically. Um, it offers you basic things like stop loss, selling options, um, you copy trading options. You can follow whale wallets and you can trade using, so first you can snipe contracts. So if you want to snipe and be super fast, you can do that with Maestro Bot. If you want to follow whale wallets and if you want to trade behind whale wallets, you can use their whale bot feature. Um, they also they also got wallet bot, which gives you price alerts. Uh, they got buy bot, which buy, the buy bot allows you to monitor buy sells and, and prices for up to two tokens for free. Um, so it is, it is an amazing, amazing, amazing bot. I think that we're going to do a lot of stuff with them because I really believe it bots are the future. So go and check it out. There is a link below to, to this, to Maestro bot. I think that they are the best. In fact, they are the biggest, uh, bot out there today. Uh, even though they, they don't have a token yet, um, uh, Unibot has a token. Maestro bot is the much bigger bot. So go, go and check it out and start learning how to trade with bots because that will give you an advantage over everybody else. Um, Okay. So before we go, should we give away one more iPhone? Let's have a look. If we get a thousand likes, we give away an iPhone. Let's look at also what, what is our squad looking like? We, we, they're on 1,954 people. Uh, 1,955. The competitor, we, remember we're chasing the Russians now because we want to be the biggest teams. And if you want to be the biggest teams, we, we're chasing the Russians. So... You see, we're chasing the Russians. They are 74 people ahead of us. We were 200 down. We're catching up. We need you to catch up. Go to the bottom of the video. Sign up with the link on the bottom of the video. Um, I'll show you where it is for those of you who can't see. Um, and then listen, we've got, we've got a few minutes. Let's maybe do some Q&A. Uh, I'm going to do the second giveaway in the in the Discord later on today. So just go, go into Discord. I'll do the giveaway myself in the Discord. Um, we also have a special section in the Discord for World Series of Trade people. So yeah. Uh, okay, if you want to know how to sign up to the Bible competition, we you go here, you expand that, you sign up using this link if you don't already have a Crypto Banter Bible account, use this link to sign up. Um, also, you can find details of the um, the Discord here, over here. You can sign up to the Daily Candle and Good Morning Crypto over here. And uh, Crypto Tax Audit, if you want to use Crypto Tax Audit here. Um, yeah, lots going on. Um, I will see you guys again in seven minutes on the uh, Twitter spaces that we host every single day. Uh, it is the biggest live crypto show in the whole world. We have like 300,000 people watching us some days, so I need to get there. I will see you guys here tomorrow and in a few minutes on the Crypto Town Hall. Until then, trade well, my friends.